To learn more about the latest developments concerning the use of alternative methods to animal testing, we will go to Tiago Pedrosa, head of the Computational Assessment and Alternative Methods Unit at the European Chemicals Agency. Hi Tiago. Hello Tier. Tiago, recently we've heard a lot about ECHA's initiatives concerning the promotion of alternative methods to animal testing, in particular the use of new approach methodologies NEMS. ECHA has published the fifth report on the use and promotion of alternative methods in the end of May, organized a workshop on the use of NEMS to move towards an animal-free regulatory system for industrial chemicals, released a new version of the QSAR toolbox and end of June the OCD working party on hazard assessment endorsed the QSAR assessment framework. So there are many things to cover. But first things first, what are new approach methodologies? Thanks for the question, Tier. Well, there is no single definition of new approach methodologies or NEMS. But in general terms, new approach methodologies represent alternatives to traditional toxicity methods that typically involve animal testing and that are useful for predicting and assessing chemical risks and hazards by providing mechanistic information for biologically complex endpoints. So, for example, we are talking about in vitro, in chemical methods and in silico computational uh, models, which may be used alone or in combination with other methods and have the potential to be quicker, cheaper, and use less animals. But molecular data that could provide mechanistic information is the key on the definition. But also, most importantly, is how we use the NAMS and for what purpose. I would say the main purpose is the replacement of animal testing with alternative methods. This is also stressed in the European Commission's Chemical Strategy for Sustainability that highlights the need to enhance the identification and assessment of substances of concern while reducing animal testing. Recently, the European Citizens Initiative urged prompt action from the European Commission to phase out animal testing, an initiative that gathered over 1.2 million signatures. Tiago, what is ECHA's role in developing new approach methodologies to replace animal testing? And what is your role on promoting the use of alternative methods? The work of ECHA on the promotion of alternative methods has started many years ago, and the events you just mentioned in the beginning of our discussion are a reflection of those many years of work. Nonetheless, we consider that we needed to step up our activities and take a more active role. The work on the promotion of alternative methods is now coordinated at ECHA by the Computational Assessments uh, and Alternative Methods Units. And there is a specific activity under our uh, annual work program for this work. Now, on our role, first of all, we have a clear role in communicating about what are the regulatory needs to use alternative methods and to help scientists and researchers to understand these. We participate in several international research projects to help scientists to identify solutions with potential use for regulatory applications. And we collaborate with the partner agencies and international authorities, uh, inclusive in the context of OECD, to increase the regulatory acceptance of NAMS. We also support the Commission with the scientific and technical advice, um, namely on the revision of REACH regulation. Second, uh, we strive to make uh, data available to be further used for the development of alternative methods and avoid the use of animals. The publication of rich study results in Euclid format, the collaboration with the European Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations to publish studies on chemicals tested to develop medicines that haven't been uh, published before, and more recently, the publication also in Euclid format of US uh, FDA toxicity data containing the results of preclinical uh, animal studies and human data on approved pharmaceuticals are examples of that. We also led the development uh, of OECD QSAR toolbox, uh, used widely by more than 30,000 users with increased uh, regulatory acceptance, also reaching the milestone of being included in OECD guideline on the final approach on skin sensitization. And last but not least, we organized several trainings and developed guidance to support the proper use of alternatives in the regulatory context by uh, industry. Thank you. ECHA has been criticized for being conservative in its approach for accepting alternatives to testing on animals. Is this perception changing? We believe that we need a clear and honest dialogue with our key stakeholders. Firstly, by communicating clearly about challenges we are facing uh, when trying to introduce NAMS in a horizontal and generic system like REACH. Secondly, 
Uh, also, uh, we need to carefully listen to uh, the feedback from our stakeholders and take it into account in our activities. And finally, we need to communicate clearly about what are the critical elements needed to ensure that the development of NAMS is fit for a purpose, can provide comparable or better protections for human health and the environment while eliminating reliance on animal testing and ultimately provide more effective solutions. This will lead and is already leading, we believe, to change in the way we are perceived, but more importantly, that we are part of the solution rather than the source of the problem. Tiago, you mentioned critical elements. What are those? We believe there are five fundamental elements that ensure that the current regulatory system functions well to ensure the protection of human health and the environment, and that these elements should be maintained in the future. And these are having defined hazard classes, having a clear criteria to allow consistent classification, having standard uh, information requirements to be able to have conclusive uh, hazard assessments, having quality uh, data for decision making that is reliable, comparable and reusable, and finally having uh, consistent regulatory actions within the chemical legislation. Now when we look into new approach methodologies, we see a gap. And we believe there are at least three critical needs that must be addressed. And these are on the ability to do hazard identification, so the ability to demonstrate that NAMS can also be used to allow a conclusive outcome on the lack of hazardous properties for a given regulatory endpoint. The second on hazard characterization, this is the ability to reliably identify a hazard based on changes at the molecular cellular level instead of observe adversity in an organism and to be able to inform how severe the toxicity effect is for human health or the environment. And the third one on extrapolation, the ability to reliably convert nominal concentrations measured or predicted by NAMS into external doses used to set safety levels and to communicate the hazard and assess the risks. During the NAMS workshop last 31 of May, we had the opportunity to present and discuss these needs uh, with the uh, participants of the workshop. What were the main takeaways of the workshop? Well, it was a very intensive one and a half days and it was striking uh, the strong commitment from all stakeholders to move towards an animal 3 uh, chemical safety assessment system independently of the different expectations on how ready we are and how fast we can move with the replacement. We are now still working on the workshop report that should be published through the end of the summer, but some of the main takeaways were that having clear goals is important to make progress as well as investing in communication and training. It was also clear that the use of new approach methodologies is advancing for some, but not all toxicological endpoints and challenges remain. Using targeted uh, case studies to build confidence and do more with already ongoing testing and available data is critical to accelerate this transition. Finally, it is critical to recognize that the regulatory context defines the readiness to apply new approach methodologies and that while there is not one recipe fits all, mutual acceptance of data is essential to ensure global acceptance and legal and scientific certainty are also critical. Last but not least, and a good indicator of the success of the workshop is that 72% of the participants felt more confident that we can move forwards with the replacement of animal testing. And this is a very positive sign. Indeed, a positive sign. Are some materials available for those that did not have the chance to follow the workshop? Yes, uh, all recordings and copies of the presentations are published on ECHA website together with a background document that also outlines key elements to be considered for a transition towards a regulatory system with no reliance on animal testing. That is great! Just before the workshop you have released a report on the use of alternatives to testing on animals for the REIT regulation. What are the highlights of this edition? Well, the report provides a status of the REACH database after 15 years of operation and for the first time includes a separate analysis of the newly registered substances between 2019 and 2022 following the last REACH registration deadline. We have also given additional attention in the report to ECAS uh, activities to promote the development and use of alternative methods. Any novelties in this report? 
No major changes have been observed since last edition of the report. The analysis of the rich registration database confirms the findings of the previous editions uh, that adaptations to standard information requirements continue to be used more than experimental studies, with read across being the most frequent adaptation. We have also noticed, however, that there is a more data generated through animal testing to investigate the long-term effects of chemicals. This is mainly due to requests for further testing made under dossier evaluation due to non-compliant adaptations. Nonetheless, we also observe that testing strategies uh, combining different tests are used to reduce the need to use animals. Finally, it's also relevant to mention that we observe a significant use of in vitro test methods, especially for skin uh, corrosion eye and irritation, serious eye damage and eye irritation, as well as skin sensitization. And this is mainly due to the legal and scientific certainty achieved for these endpoints over the last years. Tiago, ECA was also involved in creating a QSAR assessment framework. Can you tell us more about this? Well, just last week of June, the OECD a working party on hazard assessment has endorsed the QSAR assessment framework. This work uh, was co-led by ECA and the Italian National Institute of Health and established four uh, principles for the regulatory assessment of QSAR results in addition to the existing five OECD principles for model validity. The QSAR assessment framework or QAF provides assessment elements for each principle and offers dedicated checklists to assess both QSAR models and the results. So the four uh, principles include ensuring correct model inputs, uh, substances should be within the model's applicability domain, predictions should be reliable, and finally the outcome should fit for uh, the regulatory purpose. Interesting. What are the benefits of applying such framework? Well, the QAF benefits model developers, assessors, and users by providing clear guidelines for developing and evaluating models and results for regulatory use. We expect uh, that QAF uh, will increase the availability of models meeting the regulatory needs and simultaneously ensure they meet acceptable standards across multiple regulations at the OECD level. Users can compile a QAF uh, checklist and then dissipate the assessment outcomes. We believe it has also the potential to increase the regulatory use of uh, QSAR results also under reach. When can we expect to have the QAF guidance and checklist published? We expect that the guidance and checklist will be published by OECD uh, by September 2023. Thank you for your time and sharing this information. Looking forward to seeing both the OECD and ECA end of October at ChemCon Europe 2023 in Vienna.